Welcome to my kitchen. We go to such lengths to make a special holiday dinner, don't we, with all the sides and entrees. Then when it comes to dessert, we're at a loss. We want something sweet, but something that's healthy as well. Well, I've got a recipe to share with you today that everyone in your family is going to love. It's my apple cranberry crisp with crunchy pecan topping, and to finish it off, we'll serve it with maple whipped cream. It's so delicious. Let's get started. This is going to be fun. You know, the health benefits of apples are just amazing. They're rich in pectin, which actually helps prevent cholesterol buildup. The insoluble fiber in apples is one of the best sources in our diet. Apples are in full season right now, so the choices are fantastic. A question I get from a lot of you is which apples do I cook with and which apples are best for eating? Well, let's take a look at the apples over here. Red Delicious, which you can see is the apple nearest me, is the number one grown apple in America. And yes, it's delicious, but it has a lot of natural sugar and high in carbs, so there's better choices for eating. Now, over here, the multicolored apples that are red and yellow are Brayburn and Gala apples, which are both really good for eating and good for baking as well because they have a less sugar and less carb content. They're a little tart, but they're crisp and juicy, which makes them a good choice. The Rome Beauties out here in front of my display are a deep red color. They're a little tart, which makes them good for baking. But you know what? They're especially good for baked apples because the flesh doesn't break down easily, so they'll hold their form while they're cooking in the oven. And then my favorite, Granny Smith's, best known for their round shape and green color. These apples are truly a classic. Did you know they were accidentally seeded by a grandmother named Mrs. Smith in Australia in 1868? Hence the name Granny Smith's. I like them because they're firm, tart, and have the least sugar of any of these varieties. And they're available year-round. When you choose your apples, go by touch as much as sight. It's tempting to pick the large, beautiful, colorful apples. But actually, you need to feel the apple. You need to make sure that it's nice and firm with no soft spots or bruises. Whatever variety you choose, keep your apples cool. As they continue to ripen after you bring them home, you know, they actually ripen 10 times faster at room temperature. So it's a good idea to keep them in the fridge and they'll stay firm for quite a while. Well, I've started today by preheating my oven to 400. So now let's get our pan ready. Now, when you're making this dish, use a Pyrex or stone type baking pan as I have today. Metal doesn't work that great with fruit. Just a little tip there. I'm going to spread a little walnut oil just to get my pan ready. This oil gives it such a neat, nutty flavor. It's so delicious that I have these oils for you. So many people have asked where you get it, and it's not available just in any store. Oh, what a good flavor it gives. So we'll just have our pan ready. Now that oven's heating up, so we'll go on to our apples. For today's dish, I have six medium Granny Smith apples peeled and sliced about a medium thickness in a bowl. I don't like them too thin because then they get mushy. So to this, I'm going to add three quarters cup fresh cranberries and don't, don't you love them now now that they're in season a little tip too buy extra put them in a ziploc in the freezer they last for months okay so i'll just kind of blend my cranberries in there and then in a separate bowl i'm going to mix up all my thickenings here we go okay so we will just use this one i've got some arrowroot and I've got my cinnamon, my nutmeg, my cardamom, and a little sea salt. Try to get sea salt. It's really good for you. We'll just kind of blend that around. And then we'll spoon that over our apples and mix it in. I like to use arrowroot as a thickener instead of flour. It's just a little healthier, and it works really, really good. It can be kind of expensive if you have to buy it in the spice section, but you can get it at health food stores, and you can mail order it. Just a little tip there. Okay, we just mix that over our apples. It's always a good idea to mix your dry ingredients separately because they blend nicely. If I put the spices right on the apples, they would cling to the apples, and I wouldn't get to blend it as good. But there you go. Then you can see I have a measuring cup. You know me and my measuring cups. I like to do it that way because it's easy. So here we've got half a cup of maple syrup. No sugar maple syrup, which metabolizes out a lot better. Then we've got a teaspoon of vanilla tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Oh, that's going to be good. You see, the, the lemon juice kind of adds to the tartness. And 
then the vanilla kind of gives it a little sweetness. So we just blend that up, pour that over the apples, and mix it in. When that's mixed up really good, we'll put that in our baking pan, and we'll cover it with foil, and then we'll just put it in the oven for about 35, 45 minutes, depending on how your oven cooks. You're going to want to get your apples nice and bubbly, almost transparent. Then we'll take it out and put the topping on. That looks good. So in the pan we go. It's kind of a big bowl for me, but it works beautifully. Nice and mixed up. There we go. We'll just kind of spread that out. And we'll cover that in foil and pop it in the oven. Now I've got one in the oven that's ready to come out and put the topping on. Then we'll make our topping. Okay, so off to the oven we go. We'll come over here in our 400 degree oven. In goes one to cook. And then I've got one that's ready here, nice and hot. And we'll bring it out and then we'll make our topping. Now let's see how that's turned out, shall we? That foil can be hot, so take that away, away from you. How beautiful. Look at that. And see how it's a little transparent and it's just all kind of cooked in together. That's great. Now we'll make our topping and put that on it, put it back in the oven, and it will be great. Okay, now for our topping, we've got two cups of rolled oats here. So I make sure you don't get the quick cooking time, get your true whole, try to get them organic if you can, they're really good. To this we're going to add half a cup of whole wheat pastry flour, half a teaspoon of salt, little cinnamon. We'll blend that up and then we'll put some oil in here to mix it all up. Make it nice and crunchy, it's going to be good. Okay, so in a separate little dish, here I've got some oil. My walnut oil makes it taste so good. Three tablespoons of maple syrup. Just get this whisk over here and we'll just blend that up really good. And then we'll pour that over our oats. There you go. And mix that in really good. Mmm, I can smell that walnut oil. It imparts such a delicate flavor. It smells really, really good. Don't be afraid to adjust too. Sometimes, according to the environment, you may need to add a little bit more oil. It's not a problem. When this is nice and mixed up, we're going to put in a half a cup of finely chopped pecans. And this one's really good, half a cup of cranberries. That just makes it so good. Okay, now we get our pecans. And now our dried cranberry pieces. When you get your dried cranberries, try to get the ones that don't have the sugar added. You can buy them both ways. Okay, we'll get that mixed up really good. Now, this is a recipe that I like to cheat on sometimes. I have to add a little extra because in my family, everybody wants some crisp with their dish, and I have to make sure I cover that whole thing. Or they say, hey, wait a minute, I want some of that topping. Okay, that looks really good. So we'll spread this. Let's see here, we'll do it like this. So you can see all this beautiful topping going in here over the whole dish so everybody gets some. Put this down under here. There we go. Now remember you're dealing with a hot pan so you want to be careful. We'll do that. Then for a nice little touch we'll just sprinkle some cinnamon over it. Mmm, it makes it smell so good, it tastes so good. Then we'll put that back in the oven about 10 to 15 minutes more until it's brown and crispy. So let's pop this one in the oven, and then we'll take out our finished dish to show you. Oh, it is going to be good. Back to the oven we go with my hot pan. Here we go. Back in the oven. Then about 10, 15 minutes, this is a good time for you to whip your cream. So this is going to be good. Okay, now, oh how beautiful. No crisp is finished without delicious whipped cream. Let's take a look at that gorgeous dish. Mmm, isn't that nice? And with our whipped cream, it's going to be so good. Now, for an extra special twist, I like to make 
maple whipped cream by mixing a cup of heavy cream with a teaspoon of vanilla and a fourth a cup of maple syrup. I just simply take it in a bowl, whisk it up like this until you have nice, uh, nice fluffy peaks. That's the way they say it. And oh, it is so good. Well, let's serve some up. What do you say? This dish is just so beautiful. I like to take a dessert plate and get my spoon out here. Mmm, the smells of that bursting cranberries are so delicious. Ah, oh, looks so good. Get some spooned up here. And the kids love it. The grandkids like it. Grandpa likes it. I mean, this is a dish that everybody in your family just loves. And let's get a spoon here. Get a big, nice dollop of maple whipped cream. Ah, oh, how lovely. Let's scoot this over here. And then I like to finish it off with a little cinnamon maybe sprinkled on the top. Oh, how pretty. Maybe some little lemon zest for some extra zing. And this is really special served with hot tea. I love the red zinger type herbal teas that are so good with a cinnamon stick and a lemon slice. How beautiful is that? This makes the perfect ending to a special holiday meal. And it's one you can feel good about. Of course, it's good anytime, not just on the holidays. You're going to want a copy of this one today. So be sure you log on to HealthyCookingWithCindy.com, print it off, and enjoy. And I have to take a bite of this, so you stay tuned because we're going to be right back after these messages.